shortly. He's um, just from, from Moscow. He's uh, where he's uh, working on this PhD dissertation, and he's a researcher in political philosophy and social anthropology. I studied in Russia and in Manchester, as far as I know, or at least uh, at a degree of Manchester University. And he's um, working as an editor for the Doxa Journal. Um, those who joined us today, the evening this uh, function. And today he's going to talk about, or his title is, uh, if you tell briefly, uh, Anthropology of Advertising and uh, Production of Country. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm currently uh, finishing my MA at uh, Moscow School of Social and Economic Sciences uh, slash Shaminka, and uh, I'm only like right now, I, will, I already enrolled in a PhD, but I'm not working on a dissertation yet. And uh, so my talk, my talk uh, I decided to use um, this uh, opportunity to participate in this uh, conference to present my thoughts on my uh, uh, supposed uh, PhD project, like uh, uh, the idea of uh, research that I want to <laughs> conduct uh, for my PhD, so some presentation of some kind of finished research, but just some preliminary thoughts, and uh, I will hopefully leave more like time for discussion because I want to hear some feedback and recommendations and uh, critique and so on. And uh, as you can see in the title, like the, my project is connected to, to advertising, and I think this is uh, very relevant to the general topic of the conference uh, because. Uh, uh, like lately, uh, advertising is overlooked in conversation about post truth. But if we think about it, uh, uh, post uh, truth and uh, the, for example, the political culture of like post truth, spreading fake news, and so on and so on, has a lot of relation to advertising. And if we look at the history of advertising and also at the history of political propaganda, we will see that. Uh, a lot of the me methods uh, and uh, approaches uh, have a lot of like similarities and they had kind of a common development and uh, the idea for my research uh, is uh, for me is inspired by a contradiction that uh, I absorbed from various ways of uh, conceptualizing uh, capitalism uh, on one side we have uh, various like leftist, Marxist or post-Marxist uh, projects that uh, uh, describe how uh, capitalism or capitalist culture uh, produces uh, false meanings, uh, fake meanings uh, uh, in a way of commodities or uh, in a way of uh, commodification of, I don't know, politics, of uh, human relations, and so on and so on. And uh, the one of the very like obvious examples of this uh, conceptualization of capitalism is uh, the Marxian notion of uh, commodity fetishism, where uh, Marx, in, in the beginning of Capital, uh, cap uh, shows how, um, how the uh, cap uh, capitalism uh, produces commodities by alienating uh, the products of human labor and uh, creating these kind of false meanings uh, uh, connecting, uh, pr uh, connecting the products to their uh, exchange value and uh, in a way uh, in all the a further development of this leftist critique of capitalist culture, we can see a lot of uh, very common things. Uh, development of this notion of fetishism, which, uh, for example, in uh, Lukács with his notion of reification, uh, or uh, society of spectacle in the war, or in notion of postmodernity uh, as developed uh, by uh, Jean Baudrillard, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, as I actually, when I participated in the previous chapter of this conference in Erfurt, I also uh, uh, tried to demonstrate how this, um, how this uh, leftist, uh, Marxist uh, critique of capitalism 
is actually we can see in the contemporary narrative uh, discourse of uh, post truth uh, a lot of similarities with the discourse of post modernity. And uh, that's one approach where capitalism is this instance of producing fakeness and falseness and simulation. And, uh, if, and, and this is approach which is the theory based, which is uh, critical and so on. Uh, but if we uh, look at uh, more um, empirically based social sciences, and for me in this context uh, social anthropology is uh, especially important, then uh, it's more difficult to observe these instances of fakeness uh, uh, because if we, if we take a look at more like fieldwork based uh, accounts uh, of I don't know, various uh, various uh, areas of capitalist production, or for example, if we uh, uh, take a look at the research in media sphere conducted by anthropologists, then it's uh, for, for anthropologists and for uh, using ethnographic methods, it's uh, more difficult to um, to observe uh, this like negative notion of fakeness and falseness because uh, at every instance uh, anthropologists observe very concrete and specific ways of living and these ways of living are always kind of authentic to themselves they can they cannot be fake they cannot be uh, alienated they are always like uh, very concrete ways of living and so uh, of course anthropologists can produce a critical perspective towards capitalism towards specific like uh, areas of uh, um, the specific ways in which capitalism uh, exploits uh, uh, whoever and so on but uh, this perspective is always um, based on a uh, Kind of theoretical reflection and uh, always uh, uh, always implies taking this ethnographic material to some kind of abstract uh, level. So it's uh, like uh, in short, it's like impossible. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's uh, extremely difficult to absorb like alienation on the level of ethnography or on the level of film work because um, because uh, you have to. Um, make some kind of a judgment to, to claim that oh, here we can observe the lineage. You, can, you should uh, uh, always uh, contrast the way of thing, uh, the, uh, things that you observe in your fieldwork to some kind of natural or initial or more, I don't know, harmonic way of uh, things were in the past and so on. And uh, so uh, for me the the question which is uh, provoked by this contradiction is whether we can uh, absorb uh, uh, and uh, whether we can uh, conceptualize these uh, notions of fakeness, falseness, etc. Uh, by uh, actually by means of ethnography and um, uh, can we find uh, these uh, notions and concepts, uh, can we ground them in some kind of vernacular concepts of the observed uh, people uh, and uh, actors and, and so on. And uh, here I uh, would like to address advertising as a, a kind of a field that I would like to study. Uh, it's important to say that uh, this uh, area was uh, kind of overlooked in social anthropology. If you try to find any research uh, or with the uh, kind of overcrossing of anthropology and advertising, then you will uh, only find how to use anthropology <laughs> advertising, uh, like in co cooperative ethnography and so on, like how to like study the audience that you're trying to sell products using uh, uh, ethnographic methods. But uh, n uh, but uh, with like uh, when I try to find any ethnographic studies of how adver uh, ad advertisements are actually produced, uh, I couldn't uh, find any. Maybe, maybe some of you uh, can contribute to that and you know some uh, something else. But um, uh, uh, and uh, if uh, advertising was uh, studied, then it was always studied from the perspective of. Uh, of consumption from the perspective of the kind of audience of um, spectator, 
so we have a lot of like uh, research and advertising in kind of me media studies. Uh, we have also kind of leftist critical uh, outlook, uh, critical accounts of advertising, such as in the famous uh, Lombard's uh, mythologies, where he explicates ideology implicit to advertising, and so advertising uh, advertisements just uh, serve as uh, kind of a uh, example of capitalist culture from which you can like kind of uh, explicate uh, the capitalist uh, ideology and but uh, there is as I claim uh, no um, uh, theory of like no polit 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 economical theory of advertising uh, uh, despite the, uh, of the fact that uh, it, the advertising is a very huge like, sector of the economy and uh, currently all the media sphere and specifically the internet is supported by advertising like most of the media outlets, the, at least the most like uh, big of them uh, are uh, supported by money which comes from advertising and, uh, and uh, most of the current debates about let's say privacy uh, data and so on also is in a way connected to advertising because, for example, like uh, pl social platforms like Facebook, Google, etc., who collect data, they collect it exactly for this pur purpose to uh, sell more things, to sell uh, uh, to sell advertising to some companies, uh, etc. So uh, I think the research in advertising is also um, in a way politically relevant uh, first of all I already mentioned that uh, there is a very tight relation between uh, between how uh, advertising produces kind of postures and how contemporary like uh, various political forces produce post truth and um, I also we also can uh, look into how um, advertisement companies and marketing companies uh, imagine their audiences and here uh, I think uh, the interesting uh, case is that uh, George Gallup who introduced uh, public polls as a very important um, part of contemporary uh, representative uh, politics, representative uh, democracies uh, he uh, was, uh, in, in the past he was working in also in the field of advertising and these exact polls which are now like very important part of our political process are also uh, historically connected with uh, advertising and the way in which contemporary like political forces imagine their audiences uh, how they construct their audiences uh, connected to their I don't know, views and uh, perspectives on, on specific issues is the way in which uh, uh, is very similar to the way in which uh, uh, cooperative uh, uh, companies like also imagine their audience and uh, <clears throat> um, in contrast with how advertising was always studied as a kind of uh, these media, media products uh, as uh, uh, part of kind of uh, visual culture and so on. I would like to address directly the process of uh, production of advertising. Uh, so I would like to look into how um, specific people or other actors in marketing and uh, advertising companies actually uh, produce uh, their reality of consumption which we uh, inhabit. And uh, for me, I, th uh, I think uh, the, one of the most important notions here is the notion of creativity. Uh, of course, uh, the, the very um, close relations between uh, creativity and contemporary capitalism was already underlined in uh, many many research, for example, a new spirit of capitalism by Botansky and Kipila, who showed how the spirit of creativity, of imagination of the 60s or the 68 was kind of appropriated by capitalist companies, how, how this critique 
has changed by companies uh, themselves. Uh, but uh, actually, we can claim that there is no kind of, that contemporary capitalism and contemporary companies are not creative companies, but there is um, instead a kind of a process of outsourcing the creativity. So the creativity from these companies is outsourced to these advertising companies, to brand management companies, to marketing companies, etc. Uh, and creativity is a very important process because it's exactly uh, cre uh, the creative process, the process of, I don't know, uh, for example, that which uh, this process can be exemplified by brainstorming, which is conducted in these advertising companies when uh, the staff of the company gathers together and they think of ways to advertise these good is uh, exactly a process of production of these uh, false, uh, fake uh, meanings and images as claimed by kind of Marxist-based critique of uh, capitalism. And uh, I think in uh, <coughs> in, uh, in absorbing this process, we can um, <coughs> we can um, discover whether. Uh, we can uh, base uh, the notions of fakeness, falseness, etc., as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, uh, in uh, the concrete uh, vernacular concepts of the, these people who produce advertising and produce like new uh, produce new images for commodities. And um, so, I would like to look into how these people imagine. Uh, their own uh, creativity and this process of creation of new commodities, whether they think of uh, the, the, their, uh, uh, this activity as of something fake or of something uh, dishonest, uh, etc. Uh, and yeah, I think um, that's uh, basically it. Yeah. Sorry for no conclusion, but I don't have any conclusion. <laughs> Huh? That's going to be one in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, uh, thanks Alan, and uh, thanks uh, to Philip again. Um, we now have uh, had two talks that um, uh, I think quite well um, started to give some flesh to the bones of the, uh, the rather theoretical or more theoretical thoughts that we had in the, in the morning. Um, should I just, uh, yeah, I think, do uh, as, as Dick did, and uh, just uh, open the floor for discussion, perhaps um, specific questions um, to understand. Um, Narrative, and yeah, then we, we, we see um, how theoretical and how cool it is. Give me a sign here.
directed some, some way about to control the physical and technological and digital parameters of the device. So I'd like to ask you about um, this point. Uh, well, I don't, I don't really like it, but still, intentionality <laughs> of, of, of this creation, because you, you stressed it, but at which point uh, someone who, who is producing another uh, documentary, which is not connected with corruption, with political issues, etc., could avoid these attacks. Uh, could you repeat that last argument? Yeah. Uh, uh, you, 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 you put you put this this uh, technological uh, effects of uh, of the civilization into the not 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 only the aesthetics, but also in some in the policy on the yeah. politics of the message. Uh, if someone uses the same technique, yeah. would he avoid, or she avoid uh, this political message of, say, fascization yeah. of the image? Thank you. That was a really substantial remark. Um, and I think you, you added some um, also um, theoretical, historical background to my argument that I kind of um, let out. I could, of course, have uh, <laughs> mentioned uh, theoretical approaches to, to um, the knowledge of the material and what it produces. Um, to, to get to the point, uh, my argument was none of originality, of course. I, I tried to place uh, the drone footage in a, in a trend, in, in something that's, that's actually boring, and that is boring because uh, people who use it usually do not uh, control the parameters. And I um, honestly, and not uh, technically uh, able to, 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 to even name these parameters and um, um, imagine what else the images could have looked like. So this is not, so the, the argument is definitely not one of intentionality. It is, it is, it is uh, so, so, some, something uh, probably at hand for uh, Navarin's team. Uh, you can you can order these things. You can you can use them right away. You don't probably have to be a trained cameraman even. Um, but in the case of other, um, yeah, the, the comparison to Bella Hatsen would have been interesting. I, I couldn't I couldn't come up with the material. But um, what would an artist? What would an, uh, a dedicated filmmaker do? If that is a question I can I cannot answer today. <laughs> but uh, it is definitely not. The, um, so the politics of, uh, of, of the footage is, is something I think is not, uh, that is not put into the, into the material by material, by, by the but it is, it is the technology ready and the, and the user friendly commodity that, that puts these uh, um, yeah, affordances in, 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 into what's there. Um, from there, I, I tried to give a reading, but I would, I would never, of course, it, um, it would probably not hold up against a comparison with uh, something else that, that actually um, makes much more aesthetic. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Just a short question. Uh, 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 have you seen other documentaries, political documentaries, with the use of drones? Is the aesthetical uh, footage similar? Uh, no, you, you can. Well, you see it on TV. Even I mean, it's 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 part of the of, of the of the routine when you uh, want to have a uh, bird's eye view on a, on a house. You mm -hmm. use a, even as a as a normal TV team, you would use a drone. So uh, mm -hmm. this, this is nothing spectacular in itself. But, I guess what Navadi uh, added is the captions, is the choreographic measures that kind of um, makes the makes the images self self-explanatory, uh, creates the illusion as if the captions grew out like a lot of clouds that are growing out of uh, uh, the, 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 the image surface. That's what also what what, what fascinated me. But I, maybe there is maybe there is put it with or there is something like that. I, I, I don't know. So I just, I just can say it's, it's um, standard. It's standard aesthetics. It's nothing. Think. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah.
is the link between memory and post memory, memory yeah. and post politics, as you mentioned also, and uh, um, memory and post politics. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's, of course, uh, great that you, you traced back the argument and, and saw that there is still that, that uh, there is lacking, there are lacking at least two definitions what's post group and what's post memory, and um, I have. I, I don't have any of them uh, <laughs> uh, ready, but, um, the, so the concept of post memory um, is um, itself probably also um, contestable because, um, as you said, um, a lot of, a lot of memory theory already in, in implies um, the intergenerational, transgenerational uh, uh, ways of, of commemorating. But um, I just I just recently noticed. Uh, sort of a trend to, to conceptualize uh, commemorating practices in terms of post-memory because, because of the uh, absence of, you know, of witness, of the witness, and, and that, that is probably uh, uh, in, in, every, in, in all the post-totalitarian European cultures that, that, that seems to be an issue, so it's not my case, <coughs> I was just referring to um, that as, as an expression of, of, of an absence of, of something. And that very absence makes it vulnerable, I would say, to um, invasions of post-truth uh, matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, what, that's what I want to, to um, uh, show you with the, with the conspiracy theories, which is just one atom in, in, in this carnival. So there, there, there's a, a variety of, of um, practices of commemorating. So it is not that I would say it is, it is uh, um, um, it's, it's, it's fully convergent. It's fully, um, it's, you know, the, the space of post-memory has to be space of post group But obviously, in this, in this movie, um, at least, I, I just focused on the vulnerability. And I, could, I explicitly didn't want to give any definition, <laughs> because that's the, that's the um, task of the conference, I hope, as a theoretical one. Um, so this is the overall problem of my talk here, of, of my contribution. It, it relies upon uh, um, um, definitory input <laughs> of, of, of you. So I'm, I'm, I have to pass at this, at this yeah. point what is actually, um, so if I can't explain what post to this, it's hard to relate that to what I But if you have your doubts as a historian about uh, the very term post memory, I can totally understand that. I, I wouldn't, um, I, I just want to open up the question. <coughs> Myself a question whether we can uh, speak about post memory and what is it? Maybe it has some link with the practice of commemoration and especially the commemoration of the Second World War because it took place every year. And because we, all, we, we also have um, the centenaries like the memory of the First World War, uh, and it was internationally uh, very, very important. There's a, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have uh, much in common with the post truth activity. So maybe if this question is, is political, the question of, of uh, the memory of the second world war, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of uh, opinions um, contesting each other, and uh, it still has something with ideology and ideal ideological religion. Uh, so maybe it's not a question of post-memory, but post-truth regarding the results of the war, the, the practice of commemoration. So I have that, but here I think that I, I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm.
Well, you can make an argument, and it has been made indeed, that uh, the gas <coughs> industry uh, is actually the agent of, uh, of this uh, overcoming of truth, because it just from, from the outside never cared about this issue of the truth and the, and the, and the, and the lie. For, for the advertising industry, uh, the only thing that, that works is uh, whatever sells is, is true. And in that sense, you can see it as an agent of, uh, of posture. Of actually, actually what, what brings to this, uh, this posture. But when we start analyzing it, uh, and I'm thinking now, for instance, of one of the best books in the history of advertising, written by Liz McFall. Uh, and also of some analysis done by Indiana Dez. Uh, both of them, McFall and Senator, uh, they would argue that actually advertising never uh, encroaches with its own logic, but it is rather parasitic uh, on the existing uh, distinctions. So, for instance, uh, even now uh, we can see that advertising. Uh, is eager to exploit uh, the idea of expert knowledge, of expert scientific knowledge. It can be particularly uh, seen in the... Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if uh, everybody is uh, kind of aware of what's going on here in Russia with that. We have like immense uh, budget investments in the intelligent pharmaceuticals. And uh, usually they would rely on some expert knowledge. So basically, they are dependent on the distinction between the truth and the lie. Uh, without this distinction, they wouldn't be able to, to make all sorts of things. Uh, so I, I just, I'm just curious what, what, what would you think of it? Because it is a straight argument about advertising uh, as an agent of uh, post truth seems to not come to work. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh I don't uh, directly claim that advertising is an agent of posture. I just claim that uh, it's always seen as an agent of posture. It's always associated with posture. That like uh, that political uh, like fa facts or facts of social life are produced in the same way as like advertising companies produce advertising of their goods. It's just I think the general impression that. Uh, a lot of people who are uh, criticizing posture uh, share, but. Uh, um, what, what you said that uh, advertising is always dependent on these distinctions between truth and lie. This way, uh, I think every, I mean, every, uh, uh, I don't know, instance of lying and not telling truth is dependent on the distinction between truth and lie. <coughs> if, you, if you lie, then you yeah, claim that like, what is uh, not true is true. I mean, you anyway support this distinction, but I think uh, I, I I don't know uh, I can't say anything about whether this distinction is real for people who produce advertising, and that's why I I, I, mean, I put this as a question like that we need like some quality uh, ethnographic research to uh, be able to say whether uh, how people who produce advertising. Um, which categories of truth, non-truth, lie, and so on do they possess and do they use? Because of, uh, frankly, I, I don't know. Because, for example, in some uh, occasions when I uh, try to prepare uh, for this kind of, uh, to start preparing for this research and to spoke with some people who work in advertising companies, they sometimes would claim, for example, so some uh, designer in a um, advertising company, she said that they brought uh, to her company um, a project for promoting the pension reform and that she uh, 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 had to make the beautiful graphs that like, people will get more money and so on yeah, as a result of this pension reform. And she, uh, so she, uh, expressed uh, her like negative emotions connected that she has to lie to people but she, she produced very beautiful pictures but these pictures are used to fool people but it's uh, one occasion of this particular person who expressed her feelings to me but uh, uh, I can't 
same as this the kind of fly. I mean, um, uh, this kind of fly is still within the the framework of scientific truth because when you need to produce graphs, it's precisely because graphs are so convincing uh, yes, yes. For, for the audience and uh, because they convey the the authority of, of science. Yes, so right. basically, yeah, again, once again, it's parasitic uh, on uh, on the this public idea of science. Whereas the uh, the, the claim has been made that. Uh, it is precisely because of the advertising when advertising started to uh, colonize uh, public relations and politics. Mm -hmm. It is precisely from that moment on that we have this uh, this the argument has been made from the left. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this is uh, an instance of a capitalist encroach on uh, on politics mm -hmm. when everything is, is bought and sold. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, bought and sold in politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, thanks. Yes, I have two questions uh, to our man. Uh, the, the first uh, question concerns the, the legal regulations of the advertisement. Uh, have you got a chance to study at which point uh, in different societies uh, the laws uh, permit the advertisers to lie? Yeah, I think... Because I think that it, it, it might be a part of, of the answer, mm -hmm. uh, not going uh, to study the mind of the advertisers, mm -hmm. but to see the social uh, construction uh, of the professional activity mm -hmm. and uh, the limitations uh, which the advertisers have and uh, the ones they, they may break being legal but not true. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second, um, I, I was particularly interested in your point about uh, the uh, correspondence between the uh, audience structure in advertisement and in uh, monopolistic production uh, which targets consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it looks, uh, sounds logical. I mean, the advertisement is made uh, to assist the consumption. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was intrigued, if I understood right, uh, your point about the fabrication of the audiences. Uh, in, in connection with your thesis about the non-authenticity. Mm -hmm. Did you mean that uh, by, this, um, by this assembly between the advertisers and the productors, uh, in the uh, restructuring of the lifestyles mm -hmm. and redefining of the audiences, mm -hmm. uh, they produced something which is not authentic but which works? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, I think it's not that logical uh, <coughs> claim that, um, that uh, these instances which produce audience, they actually co-construct the audience which they claim to represent and which they claim to know. So, for example, like advertising companies who, are, uh, who um, have a project to study the consumers of, uh, I don't know, cars, uh, sport cars, and they present the research on these consumers, uh, then like the companies which have this research, they base their, uh, their uh, the way they sell this product, the way they frame this product, uh, in, in accordance with how they see the audience, and I think and this, uh, this, of course, influences uh, the audience itself like for the, the most simple example is that like in advertising especially in, uh, in TV we always see like some people who use this product like for example like housewife that uses like uh, dish washing detergent or something something else and then so so the the person which sees the advertisement which is targeted at him should associate his him or herself with this person and in a way uh, uh, being put in this box like housewife or some, something else uh, he or she also I think it's in a way changed but I, I don't have a I don't have a kind of a firm thesis about this but it's just a general intuition of course, the audience is co-constructed by the by the by studying audience by trying to produce uh, positive knowledge about the audience. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, actually, I guess I have a question to both of you, and it's uh, 
goes back to something that Stuchka said um, during the other time when we were concluding the remarks, namely uh, audience, basically. Um, and um, I was wondering um, how one could conceptually um, embed the notion of audience or the concept of audience into your research, uh, which is of a different disciplinary nature as it was. So um, while we were talking, um, I was, for instance, wondering what about cultural studies approaches to post truth. So uh, this idea that um, uh, cultural text can be appropriated, for instance, and so that the audience doesn't necessarily buy into the message. But then also the open question, um, where this openness is actually situated, is it in the reception process, or is it already, as it were, built into the product itself, where there are different approaches within cultural studies. Um, and then, in turn, this question, if we look, for instance, at, uh, well, let's say, um, works of art or fictional work or something like, like that could be connected to something like reader response theory. Um, and, and so I was just wondering about your thoughts, where you would conceptually locate the significance of appropriation of uh, basically the, 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 the cultural artifacts that, that you are dealing with in your research or that you will be dealing with in your research. Who wants to go first? Sociologist, either a full fledged cultural <laughs> studies guy, but um, it's, it's an interesting approach. I consider myself the audience in, in my very uh, subjective reading, so that was probably a statement against the against imperializing uh, the, the question of what. And actually works as proof of, uh, as, as a proof effect, a post proof effect. Um, I would, I was just tra tracing it in my own perception process. Um, but still, I'm probably in line with what you're thinking of. Is that the, where where does it happen? Where where does um, uh, the, 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 the judgment? Um, sorry, I, I couldn't I couldn't really follow what Dan Kira was saying about this, but there was. Um, he was, he was uh, elaborating uh, on truth being a second order uh, phenomenon and, and where, where does exactly in, in the reception of the film uh, start or where does the first order of the, ju of the uh, judgmental uh, 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 level end and where, where does truth, uh, doing truth start? That is of course an interesting problem. I probably, I too alien to these discourses. <laughs> but it or about affordances, for instance. Affordances, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I use that on the production level, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, what can you uh, use devices for devices as, as an ambivalent term, as an artistic device, also as a technical device, uh, to make create images that is and I there are a lot of studies um, about that, so, so that would be probably productive to read more about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I hope I understood the question correctly and uh, about uh, the concerning the process of appropriation of cultural artifacts and in regard uh, with advertising. I think for me it's kind of a sort of a, another version of the central question that I have whether we can observe ethnographically the, this process of like appropriation of uh, uh, producing like using like images but like but um, using these images but without their previous meanings and like using like this kind of images as kind of this empty shells which was like quite often uh, uh, underlined in like Marxist Critique of capitalist culture, and like for example, critique of postmodernity as of like order of um, science, but science without meaning. So for me, it's an open question whether it's all, this point can only be made on a kind of this theoretical and abstract level, or whether we can uh, observe some concrete practices and concepts of uh, of 
like this among the people who uh, who produce these signs and images and so on. Or maybe for them, these images always have the, the specific meanings, and they are, if, if they are appropriation, but maybe they're not. It's not appropriation for them. It's uh, uh, I don't know, just developing some tradition or some. Or maybe it's a fair usage of these images in some other context and so on. So it's, it's not a question. Next name on the list is my, is my, is my own. Um, I want to come back to, to um, the Lewis's talk. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that um, we, could, we, talk, we use the, 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 the post of the project. The post can either refer to an era or a stage or to a constellation. And if we think about it, or if we say that it's, it is about a constellation, but uh, I think we still can take a look at where certain constellations, or which point of time these constellations are, and I don't know, become possible or, or, or end, or uh, I don't know whether there are some, some of these, um, that this is, uh, is possible. Um, but um, there were two points um, in, each, in each of your presentations, um, um, the points that you might make of this, Philip, you, you mentioned, I think it was a critique of the Washington Post of an awareness video where the commentator said that this video or a video forced Putin into, yeah. into the age of using uh, certain, yeah. certain um, speech thing, uh, that connected to the post truth. Would you say um, th there are moments where certain constellations um, are being entered or cannot be avoided anymore? Um, and, and do they stand uh, against other constellations or other, other, other um, uh, ways to, to, to speak about um, truth or something being there or not being, being there? Uh, back into your, your um, um, presentation. Um, as far as I know, um, advertisement has a long connection to, to the history of um, social psychology and psychology mm -hmm. um, method-wise. It's a very long, mm -hmm. ongoing history. In the, the end, in the 19th century, I think you could go back to that if you wanted, um, which would be quite early. And there has been a lot of casual critique of course um, in the early 20th century about um, how cities change, how the laws change certain um, the surface of cities. Um, would that be like critique you are looking at? Could you would you find out as something something new, a new cons cons uh, constellation perhaps? Or is it rather could, could they also count as a continuation perhaps of um, of all the discourses um, of, of, of cultural critique? And then um, and then after this, could you say something more about your um, uh, thoughts about methods? Did you use the credit as an anthropology? Um, but you also talked a lot about uh, ethnography. I'd be interested in you know, what you are going to to look at um, if it's not a theory um, in this um, second branch of the project you talked about. And that's one, one other question to, to, to Philip. Um, I still get the quiz with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, you showed these pictures of uh, from the Tsukov Hut, which is um, a commemoration of people, uh, whether governments did or not, um, that commemorate the Second World War, and that is a bit of your question whether memory needs um, witness or. This can be the witness, the witness, or it can, uh, it can be inherited. And um, we talk about, I mean, there are other, um, there have been other wars and other, um, other, other, other um, casualties. Um, for example, in, in, if we talk about Russia, there is, um, there are veterans that are not the commemorative or the, the fight about commemoration 
namely um, the investments from the Afghanistan war, who have a very relevant other, um, I don't know, uh, the, the next certain possibilities um, to, to, to be comm commemorated, and they struggle with that, as far as I know. Um, Well, that does exist, and if, um, I've, I've been thinking now uh, 
uh, an, a theoretical answer, and I would get back, like to get back to Bernard Kierkegaard's keynote again, where he, in a non lumen way, appropriate Luhmann, who says that an information can only be information for one, for one time. What about uh, disinformation then? That, that is a special Russian tradition of, um, because it came up, it, 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 is, a, it is an invention of, of the KGB, in fact, uh, that uh, enables it in a way to, to have, to, to give the information a second life. Um, because uh, after something is new and you manipulate it, it can, it can become new again. And I think uh, for a historical study of these phenomena, I would, I would, I, I have no uh, material that I have here, but I would, I would just recommend to, to look at the term or the usage of the term dis disinformation, is it um, um The non-official memory of those not represented in official, in nowadays official um, uh, memory culture, it's interesting because I don't, um, I think I meant, I, meant, I meant something else when I was uh, elaborating on uh, <coughs> post-official memory, whether that may be a, 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 a useful term or not. Um, uh, the official culture I, I was referring to was, of course, Soviet um, memory culture. And what is uh, nowadays, uh, and of course, Afghanistan, the, 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 the um, unsuccessful war was excluded from that memory culture. Veterans, by the way, also uh, people who, uh, who died in Donbass. Um, 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 there, there's, of course, some sort of private commemoration, but that, that's not what I meant, or that's also nothing that would inter be interesting for Los Angeles because he's precisely interested in, in these um, spillover phenomena, uh, phenomena when to totalitarian or post totalitarian culture uh, drags on. That's maybe why this film was so boring. But, um, mm -hmm. it's also, um, um, a, a conceptual question: uh, What about the official memory culture? How does it live on?